Have you ever wondered why you wake up feeling a little more tired than you should? Why your eyes look puffy in the mirror? Or why that dull ache in your lower back has become your new normal? What if I told you these aren't just signs of aging, but early warnings that your kidneys may already be in distress, quietly slipping toward damage, long before most people ever recognize the danger? I'm Dr. Ethan Cole. And if you're experiencing even one of these symptoms, you might be standing at the edge of a problem that millions ignore until it's too late. But here's the part no one tells you your kidneys aren't failing because of what you do during the day, but because of what happens in the very first hour after you wake up. And the moment you understand what that hour is doing to your creatinine levels and your GFR, you'll realize how close you've been to a turning point without even knowing it. The good news is that five simple morning habits backed by solid science Improving in real patients can lower your creatinine, raise your GFR, and give your kidneys the recovery they've been begging for. And once you learn how they work, you'll never look at your mornings the same way again, because the first habit alone has saved more kidney patients than some medications ever could yet. Almost nobody does it correctly. So if you've been searching for something real, something that finally explains the fatigue, the swelling, the pressure, and the numbers on your lab tests, stay right here. Because what I'm about to show you may be the most important kidney lesson you hear all year, and it all starts with the truth. Most doctors don't say out loud. When you open your eyes in the morning, your kidneys are already working harder than you realize, and that's exactly why the very first thing you put into your body can decide whether they start the day healing or fighting for balance. Most people don't know this, but after seven to eight hours of sleeping without water, your blood becomes thicker, more concentrated, and much harder for your kidneys to filter. Think of it like trying to squeeze cold honey through a thin straw. That's what your kidneys face the moment you wake up dehydrated. And this is where the first habit, the morning hydration protocol, becomes one of the most powerful kidney-saving steps you can take. Every morning, I tell my patients to drink 8 to 16 ounces of room temperature water within the first 15 minutes of waking up. Not coffee, not juice, not tea, just clean water. And the reason is simple. Your kidneys can't function without adequate hydration. Room temperature water slips into your system smoothly because your body doesn't have to warm it up or cool it down. You absorb it faster, which means your kidneys receive support faster. Cold water forces your digestive system to work harder, pulling blood flow away from your kidneys, while hot water needs time to cool before your body can use it. But room temperature water, it's absorbed almost instantly, giving your kidneys the signal they've been waiting for all night. One of my patients, Linda, used to wake up every morning feeling foggy, swollen around the eyes and exhausted by mid-afternoon. She thought it was just age catching up with her. But when we looked deeper, her creatinine had been creeping up for months. The only thing she changed, literally the only thing, was drinking 14 ounces of room temperature water immediately upon waking. Within eight weeks, her creatinine dropped, her swelling reduced, and her energy came back. She told me, Dr. Cole, I didn't think something so simple could make me feel this different. But that's the reality. Simple habits done consistently change kidney chemistry. And it isn't just one story. A massive systematic review from the University of Wollongong analyzed 68 randomized controlled trials involving more than 2,000 participants. The findings were clear and undeniable. Increasing morning hydration lowered creatinine by an average of 0.43 mg DL in just 12 weeks. For many people, that's the difference between staying stable and falling into the danger zone. When your kidneys receive water first thing in the morning, they thin your blood, flush out overnight toxins, regulate your blood pressure, and give your cells the hydration they need to filter waste efficiently. Your urine becomes clearer. Your circulation improves and your brain wakes up with far more clarity. But hydration is more than just water and toxins out. It's a signal to your kidneys that the body is ready for a healthier internal rhythm. And as that hydration spreads through your bloodstream, your kidneys get exactly what they need to wake up fully instead of struggling through the morning fog. You may not feel the shift immediately, but inside your nephrons, the tiny filtering units are responding within minutes, improving blood flow and reducing the burden they carried through the night. But only knowing this first habit isn't enough because there's another hidden factor that can either multiply the benefits of morning hydration or completely cancel them out. And most people get this part wrong without ever realizing it. 
As that first wave of morning hydration begins waking your kidneys from the long night's workload, there's a second habit that amplifies its power gentle movement. And I don't mean an intense workout or sweating through a full routine. I'm talking about simple, slow, intentional stretching movements so gentle that most people dismiss them, not realizing they can dramatically improve kidney blood flow within minutes. When you sleep, circulation to your kidneys naturally drops. They're tucked deep in your back, and for seven to eight hours, they sit almost motionless, receiving less fresh blood than any other major organ. The first movements you make in the morning act like a wake-up call, pumping oxygen-rich blood back into the nephrons that filter your entire bloodstream. I had a patient named Robert, a 62-year-old retired engineer, who told me he woke up every morning feeling stiff, sluggish, and heavy inside as he described it. His creatinine wasn't dangerously high yet, but it was rising year after year. Instead of forcing him into a gym routine he wouldn't follow, I asked him to do just two movements each morning, the cat-cow stretch and a seated spinal twist. He told me it felt too easy to matter, but he agreed to try. Two months later, his stiffness had nearly disappeared. His blood pressure was lower, and his labs showed something we didn't expect his creatinine drop for the first time in five years. And Robert's case isn't an outlier. A massive meta-analysis examining 78 different studies found that people who incorporated regular low-intensity physical activity reduced their risk of chronic kidney disease by 18%. Not by running marathons, not by lifting weights, just by moving consistently and gently. These slow, controlled motions squeeze and release the tissues around your kidneys, helping stagnant blood flow out and fresh blood flow in. You're essentially giving your kidneys a morning massage from the inside, and the effects compound every single day. The cat-cow stretch loosens the spine and opens circulation while the seated twist rings out stiffness in the mid-back where kidney blood vessels run. Even five minutes can shift your internal chemistry more than most people realize. But gentle movement isn't just about circulation. It resets your nervous system after sleep, lowers early morning tension in the muscles surrounding your kidneys, and prepares your entire body for lower inflammation throughout the day. And if you've ever wondered why some people feel energized after just a few stretches, it's because their kidneys are finally getting the blood flow they've been begging for. You don't need yoga experience, fancy equipment, or flexibility. You just need consistency. Five minutes is enough. 10 minutes is powerful. 30 minutes is life-changing. And speaking of life-changing, here comes your mini hook. But knowing this still isn't enough because there's another factor even more dangerous than poor circulation. One that hides in the very first thing you eat each morning and most people unknowingly sabotage their kidneys before their day even begins. And once gentle movement has pumped fresh oxygen back into your kidneys, we enter the part of the morning that almost everyone gets wrong the moment you decide what to eat. Most people believe breakfast is harmless as long as it fills them up. But the truth is that the wrong breakfast can spike your blood sugar, inflame your kidneys, and force them to work harder before you even step outside your door. Breakfast isn't just about calories, it's chemistry. And every choice you make within the first hour of waking either protects your kidneys or quietly damages them. I still remember a patient named Margaret, a 58-year-old school counselor, who started every morning the same way a bagel with cream cheese, a bowl of healthy cereal, and a large cup of coffee. She didn't smoke, she didn't drink, she exercised when she could, and yet her creatinine kept climbing and her GFR kept falling. She asked Dr. Cole, how is this happening when I'm doing everything right? I told her something most people never hear. It's not about eating less, it's about choosing smarter. So we rebuilt her breakfast from the ground up. Within 10 weeks, her swelling eased, her energy stabilized, and her creatinine finally moved in the right direction for the first time in years. And the science supports this shift. The Karolinska Institute conducted one of the largest studies on diet and kidney health tracking 2.7 million people across multiple years. The results were undeniable. Those who ate antioxidant-rich, low-sodium, low-potassium morning meals had 21 to 22% lower odds of developing chronic kidney disease. That's not a tiny difference. That's a life-changing one. Berries like blueberries, strawberries, and blackberries are packed with anthocyanins, tiny compounds that shield kidney cells from oxidative stress accumulated overnight. Egg whites provide clean, low-phosphorus protein your kidneys can filter without strain. And low-potassium fruits like apples and grapes add natural sweetness without overwhelming your filtering units. 
Even something as innocent looking as bread can hide 200 milliliters of sodium per slice, flooding your kidneys with more than they can safely handle first thing in the morning. But breakfast isn't just about avoiding the wrong foods, it's about giving your kidneys the tools to repair themselves. When you start your day with antioxidant dense foods, your kidneys fight inflammation instead of struggling against it. When you choose low sodium options, your fluid balance stabilizes. And when you avoid the blood sugar spike from processed cereals and pastries, you prevent a cascade of stress hormones that choke kidney blood vessels. It's a chain reaction most people never think about, yet it determines how your kidneys function the rest of the day. And here comes your retention booster, the mini hook you asked for. But knowing this still isn't enough because there's another factor even more dangerous than breakfast mistakes. One that begins the moment your stress levels rise and it silently drains kidney function faster than any food you'll ever eat. And once your breakfast sets the biochemical tone for the day, there's something far more invisible and far more damaging that quietly determines how well your kidneys function, your stress response. Most people don't realize this, but the very moment your alarm goes off, your mind starts racing, your heart rate rises, and your body shifts into fight or flight mode. You may not feel panicked, but your kidneys do, because cortisol, the primary stress hormone, tightens their blood vessels and restricts the very circulation they depend on to filter toxins from your blood. This is why stress in the morning is so dangerous. It traps your kidneys in a chokehold before your day even starts. One of my patients, Daniel, was a perfect example. He wasn't eating poorly, he wasn't dehydrated, and he wasn't skipping movement. But his creatinine refused to budge. He told me every morning felt like a race against the clock, a rush to get ready, get to work, and catch up with the chaos of the day. When I asked him to try diaphragmatic breathing for just 5 to 10 minutes each morning, he laughed. How is breathing going to fix my kidneys, he said. But after six weeks of consistent practice, something remarkable happened. His blood pressure dropped, the pain in his lower back reduced, and his labs finally showed improvement. He told me I didn't realize how much stress was squeezing my kidneys until it stopped. The science backs up what Daniel experienced. Multiple randomized controlled trials have shown that diaphragmatic breathing activates the vagus nerve, shifting your body from stress mode to healing mode. When this happens, kidney blood vessels relax and open up, allowing filtration to return to normal. Even a simple breathing pattern, inhale for four seconds, hold for four, exhale for six, can lower cortisol levels within minutes. And when cortisol drops, kidney blood flow increases by up to 30%, giving your filtering units the oxygen and nutrients they need to repair themselves. It's a microscopic change inside your body, but it creates massive ripple effects throughout the entire filtration system. And the beauty of this habit is its simplicity. You don't need a mat, a class, or a quiet room. You can do it while sitting on the edge of your bed before touching your phone before facing the world. You place one hand on your chest, one on your belly, breathe slowly and deeply, and feel your body shift from tension to clarity. This single shift prevents the cortisol spike that sabotages kidney function in millions of people each day. It's subtle, it's powerful, and it's one of the most underrated kidney-saving habits I've ever seen. And now here comes your retention magnet, the mini hook to pull viewers deeper. But knowing this still isn't enough because there's another factor even more dangerous than stress. One that hides in the very drink people reach for every morning and it silently pushes their kidneys closer to decline without them ever noticing. And once your body finally shifts out of stress mode, there's a decision almost everyone makes next one, so common, so automatic, that they never question it. I'm talking about your first drink after that morning water. For millions of people, it's coffee. Strong, hot, immediate. And while coffee is an evil, drinking it first thing in the morning can push your kidneys into a state of stress they're not ready to handle. After a full night of dehydration and reduced blood flow, the last thing your filtering organs need is a stimulant that raises your heart rate spikes your cortisol, and forces your kidneys to pull even more water out of your system just to process the caffeine. Most people think they're waking up their brain, but what they're really doing is exhausting their kidneys before the day even begins. I had a patient named Carla who loved her morning coffee more than anything. She told me, Dr. Cole, it's the only thing that makes me feel human in the morning. But her kidneys told a different story. Creatinine rising GFR slipping little by little each year and her blood pressure creeping upward. 
When I explained how caffeine acts as a diuretic and temporarily elevates blood pressure, she finally understood why her kidneys always felt inflamed and why she experienced sharp back aches mid-morning. Instead of asking her to quit caffeine altogether, I guided her through a gradual shift, replacing her first cup with nettle tea or dandelion root tea and saving coffee if she really needed it for later in the day. Eight weeks later, her labs improved, her swelling decreased, and for the first time in years, she felt hydrated instead of drained. And research reinforces exactly what Carla experienced. Studies have shown that caffeine increases cortisol, raises temporary blood pressure, and reduces glomerular filtration in sensitive individuals. Your kidneys depend on gentle, steady blood flow, not the roller coaster effect caffeine creates. Nettle tea, on the other hand, contains natural compounds shown to support kidney filtration and reduce inflammation, while dandelion root tea helps flush toxins without stripping the body of essential minerals. These herbal alternatives give your kidneys a warm, soothing morning boost instead of a shock. And when you combine them with the hydration habit from earlier, the improvement in urine clarity circulation and energy becomes something you can feel from the inside out. The key isn't to quit caffeine, it's to time it correctly. When you wait until your body is hydrated, fed, and calmed, your kidneys can handle it without strain. But when you drink coffee as your very first internal contact with the day you're forcing your kidneys to climb a mountain before they've even taken their first breath. That's why strategic caffeine reduction is not just helpful, it's essential for protecting kidney function long-term. And if you've ever wondered why your morning energy crashes, your back aches after breakfast, or why your urine looks darker despite drinking enough water, this timing mistake may be the reason. And here comes your retention hook, the pull that brings viewers into the final section with full attention. But knowing this still isn't enough because there's another factor even more dangerous than caffeine timing, one that determines whether your kidneys stabilize or continue declining silently, and it's the part of this routine that most people overlook until it's almost too late. You've just learned five morning habits that have the power to lower your creatinine, strengthen your GFR, and give your kidneys the support they've been asking for quietly, patiently, often for years. But remember, this change doesn't happen overnight. It happens in the small choices you make every single morning, the little decisions that add up to something life-changing over time. And I want you to know that you're not alone in this. I have seen patients in their 50s, 60s, even 70s turn their kidney numbers around with the exact steps you learn today, and there is absolutely no reason why you can't do the same. Your kidneys have protected you your whole life. Now you finally have the tools to protect them back. Before you go do something that your future self will thank you for, save this video so you can revisit these habits each morning and subscribe to the channel so you never miss the latest medical insights, kidney health guides, and life-saving information I share every week. Turn on the notification bell too because the next video may contain the one tip that helps you avoid medications, prevent dialysis, or finally understand what your body has been trying to tell you. The more you learn, the more control you have over your health, and you deserve that empowerment. And if you're feeling overwhelmed or unsure where to start to take a breath, you only need to begin with one small step tomorrow morning, that first sip of water. Everything else can grow from there. Your kidneys are strong, resilient, and capable of healing far more than you may believe right now. And I promise you this, if you stay consistent, stay curious, and stay committed, there is a brighter, healthier chapter ahead of you. I'll be right here walking with you through every step of that journey. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of your kidneys, and I'll see you in the next video.